I'm Joshua Bardwell, and today you're going to learn something. Today you're going to learn about the changes that Betaflight 3.1 has made to the Betaflight configurator. Now I've got another video where I went over all the new features in Betaflight 3.1, and I've also got some videos digging into some of those features in a little bit more depth. You can check the video description for links to all that stuff. But for now, let's go through the configurator and see what's new and different in Betaflight 3.1. So the first thing we need to do is just make sure our board is flashed to Betaflight 3.1 and are you kidding me? There's there's two maintenance releases already. Okay, well, uh, not 3.1.0, but not 3.1.1, but 3.1.2. There have been some maintenance releases. I guess it's good, right? If there were little things that needed to be fixed, uh, I guess it's good that uh, they got the firmware out. Okay, so we're going to flash to Betaflight 3.1.2. <laughs> four hours ago ha 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 let's just take a quick look at what's in these maintenance releases uh there was a bug where min throttle would affect rc command throttle that's no good we don't want that all this time i've been saying that that doesn't happen it shouldn't happen well apparently it was happening slightly in beta flight 3.1 um and a few other things okay changes to defaults little things and here well, there's some fair big things. The big thing in 3.1.1 was improved iTerm wind-up handling. Um, there were some issues people were having after flips and rolls where the copter would continue to flip or, or roll. Uh, and that had to do with changes to the way 3.1 handled the iTerm. So that got fixed. Okay, anyway, let's get back to the GUI. It's finished flashing. And let's take a look. Ports tab. One of the things that's changed on the ports tab is that Betaflight 3.1 no longer enables the MSP protocol on UART 1 by default for boards that use the virtual COM port. If your board uses the virtual COM port, then you will see VCP up here in addition to all your UARTs. If I were a better YouTuber, I would have one of those boards right now so you didn't have to imagine that. Sorry. Uh, you, th this is what you get. It used to be that VCP boards would come with MSP turned on on the virtual COM port, which is what is needed to talk to USB. But they also came with MSP turned on on UART 1, which is completely unnecessary. Except here's why they did it. If you ever in some way screw up your USB port on your board, you can use an FTDI adapter to talk to the board via UART1 just by connecting the FTDI adapter to the UART1 pads, the same pads you would solder your OSD to. You can talk to the board right here in the configurator, just like you're doing now. Instead of the USB port, you can use UART1 if UART1 has MSP on it. Well, if you have a board that doesn't use the virtual COM port, then UART1 always has MSP on it because UART1 is where the USB connection comes in. But if you've got a virtual COM port board, USB is on the virtual COM port, and so there's no reason to have MSP on UART 1. And turning that off frees up a UART. That's the thinking anyway. The effect that this will have is if you are one of those people out there with a broken USB port and you've been using an FTDI adapter to flash your board, if you flash Betaflight 3.1 and if your board has a virtual COM port, you are hosed. The board cannot any longer be accessed because you can't access it with the, the USB port because you broke it and you can't access it with UART1 anymore because MSP is turned off. Essentially what you'll need to do is reflash the board back to Betaflight 3.0 and you, you just stuck there. Maybe someday somebody will build a custom build of Betaflight 3.1 that has MSP enabled on UART1 but until then if you're one of those people you're out of luck. There are some other changes to the ports tab. We've got a new column here which is sensor input. And you see in sensor input, I can choose either GPS or ESC. What is that? Well, GPS input is, right, you've got a GPS sensor and you're doing GPS. I don't know why you're doing GPS with Betaflight. Betaflight is terrible at GPS-assisted flight modes, but hey, you weirdo, do what you like. ESC refers to the ability to use KISS ESC telemetry. So KISS ESCs have the ability to output voltage and RPM and current sensing telemetry to a KISS flight controller. And Betaflight is now able to do that as well. So you can wire the KISS ESC telemetry output to one of your UARTs and choose sensor input ESC. And voila, you'll have those uh, sensors being fed into Betaflight to do with as you like. What about this peripherals column? Well, here we've got black box logging, which is what you would use if you were going to hook an open log device to a UART to do black box logging. Don't do that. It's just get, get a board with a built-in SD card reader if you want to do black box logging. The UARTs are not fast enough to log and it, it really, it really compromises you. Okay. 
my two cents. The other two things we see here are TBS Smart Audio and IRC Tramp. Now what this is, Betaflight has the ability to control certain video transmitters, uh, the transmit power, the channel that they're on. You can do that with a Betaflight OSD if your board has a Betaflight OSD, or you can do that with a Lua script on your Tyrannus. This is a hypothetical thing that people have said could be done. I'm not aware of anyone who has actually implemented it yet. The way this works is you hook the transmit line of the UART to the audio input of the TBS video transmitter, like a Unify, or the Immersion RC Tramp has a, a, a digital telemetry line. You hook the transmit line of the UART up to that, and it lets you control the video transmitter through the flight controller. How cool is that? No more pushing buttons and dip switches and et cetera. And if you have a tramp, you don't even need the wand anymore. Oh my God, Emergent RC is probably crying right now because fewer people are going to buy that $40 wand. They're just going to use the Betaflight flight flight controller. Isn't that nice? If we go to the configuration tab, what do we got here? One thing that's different here is that if you select one shot 125, for example, beta flight will protect you from choosing an invalid PID loop rate. So here you can see my PID loop only goes up to 2K. And if I set this to 8K and 8K, watch what happens when I save and reboot. There we go. It's 8K and 2K. Why is that? No, I want 8K. No, you can't have it. And the reason you can't have it is that one shot 125, its absolute, absolute maximum is 4 kilohertz. It simply cannot go faster than that for reasons. And to keep you from getting yourself in trouble, Betaflight's just going to cap one shot 125 at 2K. And the same is true for these other protocols. One shot 42 will be capped at, I think it's 12K and multi shot oh, 32K. It's good all the way up to 32K. Another small change that's been made is to the receiver section. Notice here we've only got a single pull down where we set the receiver mode. And it's only after you set the receiver mode to serial that you get, then get to select the serial receiver provider type. And that's just to simplify things if you're if you're using PPM input, you don't need to know anything about the Serial RX provider, and that just keeps things just a little bit simpler for people who are new and who might get confused by all the options. Here in the Adjustments tab, if I pull this menu down, you can see that they're now allowing you to set the D-term set point and D-term set point transition uh, dynamically using in-flight adjustments. So if you're not sure what these two things do, you can set up a switch to raise and lower them and adjust them in-flight and feel the effects in real time. That didn't used to be something you could do. Now it is. And that's going to bring us to the end of the video. Uh, surprisingly, uh, it's going to be a relatively short one. I didn't know I could even do that. But there's not a huge number of changes to the configurator, mostly in the ports tab where they've sort of reshuffled things to take into account the new types of peripherals that Betaflight can use, the KISS ESCs and the video transmitters whether that can be controlled remotely. A few other small changes. Now you're aware of them. Hope this has been educational. And as always, happy flying.